Okay, so after after Morton yells, um, <laughs> I'm going to go over a few things. I'm going to go over the basics of extending Twig in Drupal and show off a cool module that uh, pal of mine put together the other day and also show you some of the stuff you can do debugging in Twig templates. And then I'm going to pass over to Joel. And I'm going to show you how to use Twig without Drupal. Um, so that you can, there's lots of uh, fun things you can do with that. And then I'm also going to show you how to hack the twig that is in Drupal. And so you're going to play with um, the twig service. If you if you do have Drupal 8 installed and set up and everything, that's great. I know there's a lack of uh, number one tables and number two power outlets, so I apologize for that, but a little bit out of our control. Uh, but anyway, if you do have Drupal 8 installed, uh, you can play along with some of the stuff. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's, uh, let's roll the boat. So, welcome. Um, first of all, uh, I'll just warn you all, I'm Danish. Um, and Danes, we do come without a filter. That's a thing I've learned over many years being in the States, that we talk very much direct at each other. There's um, all what we used to, when we look at Americans, kind of like sugarcoat everything. We, we're not sorry for it, just how we are. So, if I, in some way, accidentally uh, come off as an asshole, you know, come up after to, afterwards to me and explain it to me why, so I can, like, try to change my ways. If you're a developer and you're just pissed off that I'm telling you you've been wrong for six years, that's just too bad, okay? Just to have these, these things set up. So, my name is Morten Birch Heidi Jorgensen. The only place in the world that can say that outside of Denmark is in, in, is in Minnesota, which still have surprised me a lot. Um, but having this name also got me into like a little bit of trouble sometimes. Birch is my last name. If you misspell it, one character, that's what's going to happen. Um, at the same time, there's always also a thing that a lot of themers have been doing for years, bitching, bitching, bitching about stuff. That's not good for actually anything, but it's been a kind of thing we did for a long time because we were frustrated. It's a little bit bad. My nickname is Morton DK. Um, this, by the way, was me 20 years ago when I was young and hopeful. Just to take, if, if, if anybody think I put myself up on a pedestal because apparently I turned out to be the person in the Drupal world you go to if you have issues with the front end. Just to make sure we all know that this is how I looked. So whatever I try to be serious about, there's no way I can get out of it. Um, I have a website called Morton DK and for a long time everybody assumed that DK is standing for Denmark. That is wrong. It's div killer, and that is what we're doing here. Uh, that's been one of my approaches to Drupal's front end for years. So apparently, you have all thought this was for Denmark. No, it's been an approach I've had for seven years. I'm just waiting to rip out every div I can get out. And my latest success was ripping out the inner form div. You know, you have a form field, you have a form, and you have a div inside of that. Latest approach, that was my very first patch I tried to get in five years ago. It did not happen. Two weeks ago, it's out. Yes, I'm the dev killer. <laughs> and it only took a week. Yeah. <laughs> Which in Drupal terms means instant. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you want to follow my ramblings, Morton DK is the place to do that. Uh, I also run a shop uh, called Geek Royale that makes Copenhagen's finest themes. I do have these stickers. If anybody want to look as cool as all the rest of the kids who have these, um, you can come and hit me up for them, but enough of that. You know, let's, let's look at what is um, actually wrong with Drupal theming um, from a front-end perspective. If you're deaf, you can moan later to these guys, but from a front-end perspective, what is wrong? And I've been in this field for like seven years now, and I figured out by looking at it for long, long, many, many times, figuring out what's wrong. Well, there's two things. We have the, what we call the vitus, or the political correct called the rich markup because it's enhanced with extra things so you can do stuff with it. I'm trying to be political correct here for, for those in the room. Um, the other thing is a CSS overload we have had. And the CSS overload is pretty much that you get, you know, when you open up your Drupal 7 theme the first time, you get 22 CSS files and you have to navigate through them. From a person outside of Drupal, that makes no sense. Um, and of course, the overload of classes. 
So you have like five classes for everything in Drupal at least. And then you wrap everything into three diffs because you might gonna need one of them. Then you add classes to them as well. That creates kind of a, mm, mm, uh, how to put it nicely, um, a way only a system would write a uh, markup in CSS. It has nothing to do how you would do it yourself. So um, that kind of made me figure out, well, there is like only two front end problems in Drupal. There's the markup and there's the CSS. That's the only two problems we have. <laughs> I've not yet, I don't know how the JavaScript guys feel about this, but that's the two problems we have. Um, there's many reasons for this, and we have asked ourselves why. Why is it like this? Why are we, why are we what are we doing wrong here? Um, and figure out you know, who's to blame. Because we're in the Drupal world, so of course we can blame somebody. You know, Git blame is really good for that, by the way. Um, from my perspective, it's the developers. <laughs> <laughs> because they have not given me the markup and the CSS I needed. They are wrong. From a developer perspective, they might gonna be, oh, dude, it's the theme are wrong. Fair enough. So now we can like stand there and point fingers at each other for a long, long time, and we did. I mean, can I get a like, quick hand? How many here was, was in Drupal back in Drupal 6? Did you remember those fun times with themers yelling at you every day? That was good, right? And it was all, yes, exactly, yay. You always knew what you were gonna do next morning at work. Piss off the themer. As a themer, I was like, how can I fuck over my developer just for fun? Um, you know, and the reason that we have this is we have this dream about one markup to rule them all. We just give the themer some markup, and he can just make that thing with CSS because CSS is theming, apparently, or have been in the way we develop stuff. So by having one markup to rule them all, we kind of locked ourselves into a system that did not work. Um, and uh, a couple of years ago, I was out of the shooting range with WebCheck. And um, on our way out there, I, of course, misused that I was sitting in the same car with her and began to like, yeah, but why are we doing all of these things wrong? And WebCheck tells me at some point, you know what, Morton? Nobody told us what to do. I'm like, okay, fair enough. It took me about a month because I'm a retard and a man and I do not always listen um, to figure out, wait a minute, nobody told the developers what to do. So they just assumed something, then threw something back at us. That's kind of like waterfall the very, very worst way. We don't even, we don't even ask people what they wanted. So a couple of years ago, we figured out, okay, if nobody told them what to do, the evil developers, me as a themer, look at every developer as evil at this point. Well, how about we begin to do that? So, you can start with the pretty please. Pretty please in open source do not function. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right off. That doesn't function. Um, then instead we begin on this. I'm, I'm calling this for um, anchor-driven development. <laughs> And it's basically you take all your, your anger, all your hatred, all your why the fuck are they doing this wrong, and you then try to put all that energy into like some kind of positive attitude. Um, so we created an, an, a name or brand organization that's called Front End United, and it is a coincidence it says if you. It was not by purpose. I know that everybody thinks that. I have witnesses on it. It was not, it's because I thought it sounded cool. So we create Front End United. It turns out to be a front end conference. We then did in Amsterdam and in 2012. That same weekend in, uh, in San Francisco, we had about 20 developers sitting. So in Amsterdam, we, a bunch of front enders sat down and say, okay, what is actually wrong? What are our issues with Drupal 7? What would we like to change? push that stuff over to the developers in the other end of the world, and then they came back actually with different suggestions. Actually, the suggestion they came back with was Twig. Um, the lucky thing was at the same conference with about 250 front enders, uh, there's a dude giving a talk actually about Twig, because all of us were like, no, no, we're not gonna use another system because why would you do that? PHP is fine enough, we just need to change it a little bit. Um, that actually kind of created just that, okay, fair enough. Um, the reason we got Twig in, Twig in is not because it's so good to use for a front-ender, it's because it's secure, which makes all developers happy because then you cannot do um, database queries into the theme layer, which I do not still understand how anybody does that. But that's not the point. The point is, now we have a system that front-enders like and back-enders like. We can now stop being dumb idiots and yell at each other. And yell at those who matter, our project managers. <laughs> but the one thing we figured out was PHP template was a no-go. We just, we stopped even thinking about that anymore. Cleared it out. You know what? PHP template, go away. 
uh, you know, and we enter this like trick thing, which is, I call it like French elegance. Also, because the dude who wrote it, he's a French dude, and he is kind of elegant actually. So it's kind of has a good good ring to it. Um, so in uh, you know, six, seven or months later at Bad Camp that year, uh, what happens is that that well. Um, we are working really, really hard to get it pushed into Drupal Core at that point. Uh, and the thing is, you can only have, you need to push it in very early on so we can figure out you know, how much this is going to change. And I have a little side story here that I like to uh, also talk about, about uh, how Dries run stuff. So the same morning, I have a session that's called uh, the Angry Themer, which was a rundown of everything that was wrong in Drupal. So the two slides I did with the two things that was wrong, this was like a 45-minute rant and me just yelling at people. Um, the same morning, I have Dries has the keynote, uh, and I sit, I go, get up really early, I get my breakfast, and Dries comes over to me at the breakfast table, hey, can I sit down with you? I'm like, of course, Dries, you can sit down, because I'm going to tell you how important it is to get Google Twig in right now. And I go at Dries for like 45 minutes, and he sits patiently listening to me, which I still do, do not know why he just left the table instead, because I would keep talking anyways. <laughs> but... Um, then what happens is we go back to the, go into the keynote and I go over to my session and one of the guys comes running over, actually John Alton is like, Morton, you need to come here right now. And we get back and Dries is actually pushing the code in. So suddenly we have this like thing we have been working on for years to change, suddenly gets in. And, and I have a session called the angry theme about how, how no developer respecting the theme in community anymore and blah, 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 all of this shit. And I'm, kind of, I'm a grown ass man. I don't cry over code commits. It was a little bit hard for me to be angry and not be like a little bit emotional, so I had to start my session five minutes later because I had to add a little detour around the campus where I had to like figure out which kind of mindset I would go into. It's really hard to do an angry session slides with a smiley face up to here, by the way. <laughs> that's really, really, really hard. Um, but that's actually another thing that I wanted you to all do. Now, we all have a phone, right? And a Twitter account. Take your phone out. Up with your phone. So uh, um, Jen Lampton was running the show at this point. This is a Twitter account. She's not here today because she's out riding horses. That is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's the thing she also do besides of cracking the whip over us. Um, I would have you all to send just a thanks to Jen for getting um, Drupal Twig into core. This is the, uh, the picture, by the way, of how she looked when um, it came in. It was a very, very fun little moment. Do that, and I'm going to take a sip of water. And if you want to write that we miss her, you can also do that. <laughs> All right. So enough of this history thing. Um, one of the things we then figured out was, OK, we can change the theme layer to something that's different. Well, it does not solve our basic problems of doing theming without having a plan. So that was the thing we started out with. Let's make a plan. That's at that bad camp. Um, and we begin to set like different goals that what we want to do. One of the things we don't want to do in Drupal 8 is having all of the what ifs. What if a theme want to do this? What if a theme want to do that? What if, what if, what if, what if? Because um, when you do that kind of development, you're never going to get, first of all, you're never going to get things specific. Second of all, you need to make everything overly generic so you cannot like pinpoint to things. So if we started dropping that, we could actually be able to, you know, make a theme system that's quick and works, works good. Instead of trying to take care of 100% of all the issues, how about we just take care of 80% of the issues? If, you have the la if you're one of the people who have the last 20% of the issues, well, if the theme system is flexible enough, you can just fix that. We will not, we will not try to enforce that on you. That's like one of the reasons that we have three divs around everything. Um, stop dumbing things down. And what do we mean by dumbing down? One of the things I got known the first time in, in Drupal was why we have the content variable, you know, inside of a, um, a node TPL. We have that wonderful content variable that you just, just a big blob. And like, well, the reason it's all there is like so we can like re easier like, wrap it around and move it around. Kind of like, well, I cannot move anything inside of it. No, but it's, else it's going to be like really hard. I'm like, seriously? Now I have to do a pre-processing then and I go all that way? That should not be it. So like, stop, stop thinking that the theme is an idiot um, and actually say, hey, they do, it is the development. Um, and we kind of said all these like front-end experience about start from nothing, so don't 
do not solve all the problems, provide the right tools, have visibility and consistency and all the kind of like these like different things. Um, so we ran around for that for like two years and tried to build on that. Uh, and then about two months ago, we did a survey. And the survey was to figure out, are we actually on the right track? Uh, we got 499 answers within a week, which we were pretty happy about. I thought we would get 100 answers, and that was it. But 499 people actually wanted to answer this. Um, and, and basically, it told us that uh, who we actually are. It's like it's, we are a bunch of people who have, a, the fund owners have a long experience of building websites. You could also say they're old or experienced. I do see myself as an experienced man, just turned 40. I'm not old. Um, but I do also say that we have a lot of experience. People are used to building stuff. We don't need to protect them. Um, another thing that we asked actually was, uh, no, what do, you, what do we actually want? So one of my, my issues is I want to have a complete naked Drupal coming out. I want to write all the markup, all the classes, everything. And I thought I was epically right on that. The other kind of side of that is a way, um, you know, like the send theme works, where it's way more based on having class names and the structure and things. And so what we figured out here were that the well, majority uh, wanted actually to have something like out of the box. They would also like to be able to change it. And a smaller group were a little bit more like, hey, we actually want to have a complete innate, complete control of everything. And then you had a very small group who were like, you know, I don't really care, um, which was really interesting. Um, Another thing that came out was this. We asked about the CC of uh, preprocessors. How many are actually using that? Out of 499 people, 378 is using SAS, 105 is using less. Uh, then we have other and, ah, oh, shit. God damn it, my screen is. And we have about, I don't know, uh, 80 people be like, nah, I don't use that. So that's pretty interesting, right? That's about, what, 85% who's using a preprocessor? And Drupal and themes do not use preprocessors, right? We are just putting everything out with a CSS file. That's fucking dumb. We are not embracing the own things we are using on a day to day basis. Why? Because of something, something, blah, 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 blah. That's dumb. <laughs> that's how I'm not, when I go into an issue queue and I get smacked around by developers, that's how I, I see it. Like, they say, yada, 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 yada. Like, well, it's dumb. Um, so uh, I want to do a really quick survey. How many in here uses Grunt or Gulp? How many here are really afraid of beginning to use Grunt or Gulp or SAS or that kind of thing? Like two or three people. Fine. Good. I'm very glad for that because that's actually a thing we're going to do in the future. We took that decision for you all yesterday, just to make that clear. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we had a meeting, a lot of us who are building build based themes in Drupal 7 about how to do stuff in the future. Um, they're going to come a plan for it later on. Good. Anyways, all that, Morton, stop talking about this and get to work. What is the, all the good shit around Drupal 8 that's so much better than Drupal 7? Well, first of all, it's HTML5. Yay. What does that mean? Well, it means that our markup can be to look like this. This makes me happy in so many ways. Um, another thing is Drupal 8 will not support IE6. It will not support IE7, and it will not support IE8. Yes, you can do this. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we can begin to actually do things really, really pretty. We do not need to add all these classes. We don't need to do all this dumb shit. We can use CSS3 to build it all up. Um, in Drupal 8, we will also have pretty markup. Um, this, by the way, is, can all be this man over here, Mr. Lewis New. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Newman, <laughs> Lewis Newman, Lewis Newman, the British dude over here has kind of been championing on this. Uh, it only took, what, nine months to fix this? Yeah. Um, later on, I'm going to talk about how important it is you all come in and help us out in the issue queue. So uh, it only took 25 seconds and a, and a day to fix it. Um, this is when you open up a new Drupal site uh, and you do your install for the first time. Um, so what you, can, what you can see here is actually how nice the markup looks. This is Drupal install directly out of the box. Um, you can all, already see here what we're using, some kind of like um, smacks naming techniques at this point. Uh, but also there is O responsive, the hot thing, right? You can say Drupal 8 is responsive. 
sweet. Um, it's the, the amount of classes, the amount of markup that we're using now is actually built in a way as we as Fundender wanted to build. So check that out, body class install page. I do, not, I do know that it's very confusing for us. It doesn't have the HTML class anymore because I had no idea I was on a, on a site that was built on HTML. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so that's kind of, uh, that's, uh, um, that's out of the box how it actually, um, it, it, it works now. Um, oh, let's see here. Uh, another thing is that we're removing bad practices, IDs. When you open up stock now, you will not, yeah, exactly. IDs, what are they doing there? Well, it's so, uh, you have kind of a unique place on your page every time. Um, you know, you need a note ID for every note. I, I don't even have words for that. Well, <laughs> I have those words for it, but trying to behave. Uh, we're removing all of the IDs because it's dumb and stupid and do not belong there. You use IDs for other things. Form fields, for example, could have an ID for them if you need that for like some JavaScript stuff or whatever. But we're not going to use that for layouts because it makes no sense. And by the way, it also breaks our pages. We, right now we have a, uh, an issue actually in the note CPL where we only need somebody to write the change notice for it. And then we can remove the IDs from all of the notes. So somebody want to help out with that? Come and see me because I'm really bad at writing and uh, I'm not a programmer, I'm more of a designer, so we need help on that. Anyways, removing that. Um, in Drupal, you know, Drupal 7, you had like a shit ton of classes on a body tag and whatever. In Drupal 8, well, first of all, we have to remove them, a lot of them already, but we're also gonna talk about what we actually need because how about we build a theming system for themers by themers? That's kind of the idea for it. Um, CSS structure, the CSS structure is going to build on kind of a medium thing between Smacks and BAM. Uh, how many of you was in seeing John Alban's talk? So you kind of saw that this, that's, that's the structure we're going for. Um, there's a whole uh, documentation on CSS structure and how we're going to do it. We finally have CSS documentation in Drupal, which is another good thing. Um, CSS files names, uh, a long discussion. It is have been approved even by me. Um, we had this discussion in, in Sydney, standing, looking over the ocean. That was, that was nice. Um, and I actually figured out how to get this done. Um, name spacing as well, logic and name files. Um, our file structures have changed a little bit because um, what you can do now in Drupal 8, you can drop your theme in a folder that is in the root of your site that's called themes. You know how we all, when we open up our Drupal site seven first, first time, and you put your theme in that folder called themes because that made sense, and then somebody at your theme, at, at your team yelled at you because you were doing it wrong. You go to sites, all themes, something, oh, God damn it. Now you can, you can actually put it in themes, and that's where it belongs. Exactly, thank you, yet. <laughs> You don't, know, you don't need to look, look like an idiot on a daily basis anymore. Um, <laughs> you, I said, don't. Yeah. You don't have to. You can. Me. Uh, and that's why, back to one of the things about provide visibility. How about we build, the, build a system where we can actually figure out ourselves? Um, the whole uh, file structure for modules. So if you have a theme and you want to figure out, oh, crap, I want to overwrite this file. Where do you find the template file for it? Well, you go into modules, you find your module, and it's going to have a, a template folder with templates in, and that's where all the markup lives. Wait a minute. All the markups live there. Yes, there is no functions anymore. We are very sorry for that. Um, debug is another new thing, and this is, if you have not seen this before, be ready to get your mind blown. So. In Drupal 7, where's my template? You know, how do you find your template? Well, you look at the class name, right? Because the preprocessors gave it the name, so if it has a note class name in it, it's probably the note. Fair enough, that makes sense if somebody told you the secret handshake about that, and you can then use a week of like grabbing through your site and figure that out. Besides that, dear developers, next time you tell me to grab anything, I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> I do find, I don't know how to do grab. Um, so, in Drupal 8, when you go into your settings file and you go and see settings, trick, debug, true, magic will happen. Mm -hmm. This happens. What is this? Let's look at that a little bit closer. Um, it prints out, let me just, oh, I cannot point. So as you can see, it says file name suggestions, note articles, note three, note view front page, note view front page, page one, and note HTML.twig. 
And then it says begin output from and then my direct path down to where it lives. Exactly. Wow, why didn't we have that before? <laughs> so now when you open up your theme, you set your, set your, your, your debug to be true, you can just you point directly to the files. Another thing that the theme name suggestion does is it's like a hook suggestion. So if you want to overwrite this, you have your right names right here. You don't have to guess them or do a, a theme... Uh, pre-process something, figuring out, printing it out on the page, what was the name for the theme hook suggest in that kind of way. You just get the file name right there, so you can exit just, go in your browser, right-click on it, copy the name out, create your new file, grab the file from the place, and be done with it. I do know as a job security thing for a lot of us, it's been really nice, it's been so hard to get into Drupal theming, um, but I do would like to use my time in the future to actually do front-end work instead of looking for files. Um, <laughs> It is, though, in Drupal 7, if you like this kind of thing, uh, the Epic Mothership do have it built in already in a really, really terrible and bad way. And I'm really glad to work with talented people over here who I can kind of throw an idea off and then they do it in a nice way because it's not so good. Um, yes, theme functions. We could actually do a whole minute of of a little bit of silence for theme functions because they will not exist anymore. What does that mean? That means you cannot hide markup anymore from your front end, that you have to put it in a template file, that you have to put into a folder called template so you can find it again. <laughs> uh, all of them dead now, by the way? Have we killed them all? Uh, we're like, no, we're like 60. 60? Yeah. We still have 60 functions hidden around that we still need to kill. But all yeah, of they them... They all have patches. They all need markup review. Yeah. So we need actually people again to come in and help with this, but that means that you as a developer will not ever again do a theme function. You have to put it in a template so you can actually find it again. This is kind of way back to figuring out how do we do a system that's good for all of us. Um, another thing that you need to kind of understand from the get-go is like the theme files are compiles. And me as being a dumb front end, I don't understand what that means. It's something about it creates PNP stuff and shove it over. Um, to me, it's kind of like using SAS. It just does the stuff for me and tells the rest of the system. That's just the only thing you, you should know about that, actually. Um, if you want to really know about that stuff, find Krill, and he will, he will talk on you for like an hour about it. I did it once. <laughs> Mistake. Because he thought I was really interested. <laughs> and I just needed a quick answer to be like, it ended up like, uh, we're compiling all the files and we're putting it in a place, so if it creates PHP for us. Developers, fine, done. All right. By the way, SQL on the theme, no, I'm not going to yell about that because nobody does that. If you see, because this is how I do my SQL stuff, right? This is how we do every select statement in the world. I will always just do a start to get it all. That's how we have been building, you know, if you look at the markup, here and with the classes, that's how I felt uh, for a long time we did our stuff. Developers want to have very specific data out, which I totally get. I want to have very specific classes out, so we try to kind of like not do a select from star, select star from users. Um, branding and logos, you know, it, it used to be a block. That is not a block anymore. That is actually, um, it used to be hard coded into a template. That is now a block. So you can actually move that around in your layouts instead of having that hard-coded directly into a page TPL. Uh, no, oh, sorry, page template is not called a TPL anymore. I had like seven years of stuff I need to like remove out of my head. Another little good thing. Um, in, with CMI, what you can do now is you can actually pack your theme with configuration. And at first I thought, why would you do that? And then I looked at image styles. Then I looked at my theme, uh, like, wait a minute, baby. I can now build a theme with images that fits my, the sizes of my, my site, and I can then just ship that. That also means if you want to, let's say, oh, uh, views, I don't like that you wrap everything in stuff. Well, it's just a configuration, so you can pack that with your theme as well. It is pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Um, and look into it at some point. We're not going to go into that today because we have so much stuff already, but that's just to get your mind like, Moving on that, CMI actually gave the, the theme as the one thing that we needed the most, I think, besides the clean markup and all that. Um, so let's, let's look a little bit quick into Trick Basic. And, uh, and actually, I think it's so easy that all of the companies who is doing training is going to be out of a job in, in the front end, and I'm not sorry for that. Um, so if you look at basically on it, um, you know, 
comparison between PHP template and Twig, you have a comment, and that you do these curly brackets and a, and a hashtag. It's just a comment. That is, by the way, a little bit annoying because that means that the way we do uh, arrays and, and what are they called? Objects? Yeah, objects and all that, like with the hashtag in. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, so your array keys. Yeah, array keys is kind of like Twig thinks it's a comment. It's a kind of <laughs> an annoyance. We need to figure that out. Because render arrays still exist, we have to deal with that. <laughs> so yeah, we still have to. If, if you're trying to dig a little bit deeper into the the ob or the objects that you have in your in your uh, template, um, sometimes you have to use hashes and array key uh, access to get at them, just because they're still renderable arrays. Anyway, so a comment is so oh, these. We call it a two board comment. That's a whole. That's a Dane. This is very confusing to say, but have these bra curly brackets and our oh, hashtag, and that's a comment. If you have two curly brackets, that's a variable, and that's what you need to know about that. Um, so in in Drupal, we used to have you know you go print your variable name, and then you can drill into it to go foo bar something something something, and then you turn down multilingual, and then you got that unt. Thing is that unt, unt, unt. I was always thought about what is does unt means. I live very close to Germany, so unt means and. I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> it mean, also meant that if I turned on multilingual on a theme, it would not work. That was just ace. So, what you do now instead, again, job security, <laughs> or rather, pissed off clients yelling at you. Uh, what you can do now instead, you do this like dot notation in where you drill into the variable. So where, where we used to have drill into an array, you do this high, is it, is it an arrow, or is it like this und, or how is it actually defined? Now in, in Twig, you have like a simple way of doing it. You go just with dots between it, so you go foo, bar, bash, so find my stuff. That's how you find your variables. Um, that's actually kind of sweet. And there's also a dump, so you can get a whole dump and see the, how, it's, how it's actually structured. If you want to look at doing an if-else command, um, so in Drupal, in PHP template, you know, it looked like PHP. Now you have, instead, you have these percentage sign. And that's kind of how to tell this, it's how we tell Twig, hey, you're kind of a function thing. You do, now you do magic stuff. Um, so you go if foo something and then an end if. It looks very similar to PHP. And so if you're used to doing that, it's going to be that easy. Um, we can do loops as well which is pretty nice. So if you have an array with a lot of stuff in, let's say the most awesome team of people ever on the earth, and you want to do a loop for them, you go a for users in users, and you just drill into that loop and go through it. It's, that's, that's the only kind of thing you actually need to understand here. Um, the beautiful thing about the loop, and what I first had to figure out, I was like, wait a minute, should I just think all about that stuff as a loop? I was like, okay, how do I figure out my third or fourth loop, or the first and the last? And uh, there's a f loop linked. You can take your loop first, loop last, loop index. Uh, you can also like, do, so you can do, uh, hey, if you're the first loop, be green, else be blue. If you're number two, you can do this, you can do that. Kind of way. I'm going to show a, a, a real example of how you can actually do that and how you can defend your designer at the same, same time. Um, set sets a variable. So if you have a lot of like different things coming out to a template and you kind of want to build a, a variable here, uh, my example is I want to build a count which I want to use as, as class names, you do, uh, here I do a set foo, and then I do the count uh, with my loop index, which just adds one each time, and then I'm going to have count one, count two, and so forth. So it's got like small little issues that's pretty neat to work with. Filter is another thing. So if you want to do magic stuff with your variables, here um, I want to do an uppercase, you can filter your stuff in. Um, Another way to do filter is having this pipe. So you have a variable, and then you do a pipe on it, and then you can do all kinds of stuff. Basically, on the pipe, you can do all kinds of crazy functions that I know Joel probably is going to go ape on. Oh, further down. These two boys, every time I work with them, I was like, hey, you can do this pipe, and then you can add a pipe, and you can add a pipe. Well, I get a little bit confused. I'm not so clever. Um, but you can do all these things. So here, if I want to do uh, on my, my, uh, my name variable, I want to do, um, you know, I want to strip up the tags and I want to make it a title so I get a, um, an uppercase first letter. That's how you would do that. So like manipulating your data uh, directly in the template is really, really easy. Um, so, and that, that was actually all you need to know about Twig. There's not more to it. There's I a do. lot more to it. 
What? <laughs> well, from, from my perspective, <laughs> from the dude who takes the template files and just put a little bit of pretty on it and make your site look ace, and I, t I claim uh, I claim it was me who built it, that's what I need to know. Um, so uh, what I began to do was actually building a theme to figure out what all of this stuff does, because if you look at the theming only from an academic side and you don't do it in practical, uh, you're going to burn a lot of bridges. You're going to do a lot of dumb things. So I started this theme called Utrasil. And Utrasil is, by the way, um, this is Utrasil. I made posters for it because I have a slight ego issue. Um, <laughs> Utrasil is, uh, I'm out of Denmark, and we actually, we actually claimed America, Vinland, as we call it. We claimed that before anybody, well, there were some Indians who were living here at that point, but besides that, we were here before Columbus, and we are still a little bit pissed off about that, by the way. Just saying. So, <laughs> Utrasil is in the, um, in the uh, Norse mythology, is the, is the biggest, most badass tree you can find. And if I build a theme, I'm not going to build something like a twig that can, like, easily break. I could call it birch. That's a little bit too much ego, right? So, <laughs> Utrasil instead and add in as much Thor and Odin and Freya and all of that stuff on top of it. I have like a hundred of these posters with me, so if you want one, come and claim it afterwards. Uh, the idea was to begin to actually play around with this and figure out what works and not works. Um, and that's been really, really fun. Um, so, it's all over on GitHub right now because I, I was playing with GitHub that day. Anyways, it's a place to actually go and go and see and play around with. But how the theme structure now is in Drupal 8 is, as you can see, it pretty much the same as we had in Drupal 7. You have an HTML.html, the trig file that kind of encapsulates the whole page. Then you have a page HTML file, you have a region, you have a block, you have a node, you have a field. So that you don't have to relearn. It's the, totally the same as we used to have it. Um, when in Drupal 7 you have, this was your info file. Uh, you define your region, style sheet, you are probably doing some, some FOAD on the CSS files to remove stuff you didn't want and don't kind of wait. Well, in Drupal 8, it changed a little bit, but as you can see here, it's pretty much the same. It's YAML files instead, right? For, you're actually YAML on there. Am I actually missing the YAML? Did I do it wrong? God damn it. So, yeah, this YAML, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is my new info file, and what we have up here, you have your, 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 your name for it, type, it's a theme, description, which packet is, which version is, and then we go have the style sheets for all, and for print, and what's this one? Style sheets may remove. How many things, can you figure out what that does? Can we have? F-O-A-D in YAML. Exactly. So in Drupal 7, you call, you told Drupal, hey, um, use this CSS file that you're using in another place, and, but point it to my own theme. And then Drupal is dumb, and Drupal thinks that it already got that, that, that file in, and it forgets all about it because it cannot find it. It's a pretty dirty way to do it. What you can do in Drupal 8 instead is just to find the files you don't want to have. So if I don't want to have system theme and user icons or whatever else I don't want, I can just add them here, and there's a style sheet remove. So now we also kind of get like logic into our, into our things. Um, defining regions. It's the same thing. You have regions, you have header, logo, and so forth, and that thing. Um, so that's actually just your info file. If you really like PHP template and things that all of this stuff of not using you know, uh, functions and clean way of doing it and having themas that likes you again, you can um, add in the engine PHP template. So you can go, you can, if you have an old theme, you don't want to upgrade and stuff, you can still do that. Um, Personally, I don't understand why we're keeping it in Drupal 8, but it's kind of one of these issues, like, yeah, whatever, it can lay over in that corner. Kind of like the Paul module. Did we get Paul out in Drupal 8? So, yeah. Yes, finally. <laughs> how, how many years did that take? Eight? <laughs> no idea. Um, yes, FOAD is built in. Um, regions on a page. So when you go into a page template now, and you used to do an if, you know, variable page, footer thing, you would print it out that way in Drupal 8, it's really, really, it's even more simple. You have a page footer, and you call it on that uh, that name, test it if is it here, and then you print it out, and then you wrap it and stuff. That's how it all. That's how your regions works now. So just remember, you have page dot your region name. Um, we if uh, we're still having blocks. Um, <coughs> sorry. So um, in Drupal. 
uh, seven, um, we had a block that looks like that. And as you can see down the next example, um, it's the same thing we're doing. So a lot of these things we're used to is kind of the same, it's just changed a little bit. Um, so that's, uh, um, so the, the thing about the, these blocks is, as you know, um, let's say you have a nav, you have a navigation somewhere, and Drupal, as you can see here, is doing it epically wrong. Um, and you want to change that. You want to change it to another tag. You want to do something with it. Well, how do you do that? So in Drupal 7, you used to overwrite the file. We're doing it the same way now in Drupal 8. How you're going to do that is, uh, let's say you look at the block HTML, the trick file. Uh, you open up. You do an you know, ins inspection directly from your from your view source, from your browser. You get your, oh, call name, block. Hmm, okay, it's a block. File name suggestion. Grab that file name. And then you can jump in it. What you then can do with that dump of your new file is actually being manipulated. Um, and the thing we talked about before with like, the, the pipe, um, so let's say I want to I wanna remove a lot of class names that comes out. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, um, say, uh, do a, a pipe replace. Um, so we have, the, uh, we have the attribute class and the role and the attribute role. Um, if you go up to the, the top line of it, uh, you can see attribute class. Uh, pipe replace, uh, and I remove the block class name. That's how you would on the fly just remove these things. It's kind of like small little tweaks. Instead of doing a, you, instead of you go and do a pre-process and try to grab it out, you can see it directly in the template, and you can manipulate it in the template. Um, and that's the thing you can do all around with attributes. Another thing on the attributes that comes with, so attributes on on a markup would be <laughs> class names, uh, the role, if it has an ID, if it has like data fields, whatever it has, that's all packed into the attributes. Um, what you can do with attributes is you can separate them out. Um, so you would, you would say, hey, if I have my attributes, but I have, want to have my class in a specific place, I can rip that out. So in the last line down here, you can see it says attribute the class. So I rip out the attributes, um, and I put them in a class. The good thing about that is if I want to add in a class name really quick, that would be the way I would do that. Um, so here, if I want to add foo, I go in and say article class you know, equals foo and attribute class. So I separate these two, and then I print out the rest of the attributes. Um, and that, that would be the way you would like manipulate these things. So when you have specific needs, you don't have to do a pre-process and trying to figure out where that comes. You simply just split your things out and then put your class names in where they should belong. Um, so that's kind of like the overall all thing. Um, for the for funsies, I am... Um, I was sitting and looking at like different examples of dumb stuff I have been have, have had to do for years for different uh, designers. And one of the things I had was was like an example like this. You get a comp like this, um, and the designer tells me because you work with a company where they don't do HR, they don't talk with you before anything. You, know, you get this in; it's set in stone, and that's just how it's going to be. So in Drupal Seven, um, if you have your terms and you were told to do this, you would probably have to download a module or go very, very deep in an understanding of how a lot of Drupal um, module things works. And if you want to do the same thing here in Drupal 7, um, and the thing I want to do here is I want to do a count on all my terms that comes out. Uh, I want to have a comma between each of my, my terms, or my, um, and the second term needs to be green and italic. I don't know why it needs to be that, but that's just how it is. I got that from the designer and I have to follow that. And the last of the terms needs to have a dot in it. Fair enough. Um, you know, I do think the designer is an idiot, and I hate him a little bit for it. I will take revenge in my source code. But, um, <laughs> you know, when it's set in stone, you cannot do anything about it. So what are you going to do? Well, a Drupal, the usual way of doing that in Drupal 7 would be something about trying to find a module, finding a fork, poking yourself in the eye a couple of times, hating life, <laughs> downloading another module, ending up doing some, like, regular expression crap, and just be like, why did I use two days on this? I know exactly how the markup should look. It should not be a problem. So the first thing I would do now in Drupal 8 is I would say, hey, my markup is going to be this. Yes, I'm adding in the designer is an idiot class because designer is an idiot class makes, the, makes it green and italic. So revenge has been delivered. <laughs> it's an important thing of being Dane. Um, so what I then do is I go out, take my note, and say, hey, you know what note? How about you give me all the tags? So I do content.field tax, that's the, that's the name for it. And then I do a content without field tax. So that content variable down there, that's the one that's going to print all of your data out to the node. So you start up ripping it out, and then you can print out your field tax wherever you want on the page. 
So now you can begin to like move it around as you as you want to. You could kind of do the same thing in Drupal 7 with the whole array thing from a page. It was a little bit more complicated to say at least, at least for me, uh, it was, this is to me way more simple. Um, the thing about the whole content is that you do a, do a without, is pretty much, we're just explaining to Drupal, hey, print everything else out, then this, and then we uh, put out the fields. Um, and then you can take that field name and place wherever you want to do that in your, temp in your note. Um, then what I do inside of my field dash dash field tags dot html because that's the template name I got from the Drupal system copied that in. Um, what I do there is say okay let me figure out how to work with this. It's loop. Uh, I do a for delta item in items. What that basically means is hey fire up a loop. Fair enough. Okay so every time I go through this loop I'm going to do I'm going to add a couple of classes into it. And the reason I'm going to add these classes in because of course the client also demanded this to work on IE8. So I cannot do it just in CSS, right? I also could just do a count on it and use int type, which is awesome. But no, 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 I have to add in classes. Fair enough. Good. So I do a set class. I create a new class. Now I'm going to add in. I'm going to do a cycle, and I'm going to do an, an odd and even on, a, on that delta. That means that every time I go through a cycle, I'm going to get one of these two out. And then I'm going to do a count dash and then a loop index. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I also get a count so I know how far down I am. Um, and then uh, you, know, you print it all out, fair enough. As you can see, and the, the link has the class name I just defined with the item in, and that's gonna print out odd count one, even count two, and so forth. So now I have the markup I actually need to add these things in. It's still not beautiful, because I wanna add in the designer is an idiot, because I wanna have some payback. <laughs> so to do that, also, by the way, he also wanna have tax versus tag, because you cannot just say there's one tax you know there's gonna be a content editor after you there, right there. Um, so to do that, what I'm doing here is to say, okay, you know what, when you, you're the first loop, how about we, we just count on this length of the, of the loop, uh, and then we count on the length of the how many, you know, when I have a count on my loop, I know how many tags there is, is that tag or tags? Fair enough, then I can print that out. Like, <sighs> developers in the room will be like, oh shit, you just put logic into your theme. Yes, I did, get over it. <laughs> um, so what I now want to do again, you know, there's like what we call um, front end logic. It's like some of these like so small things, it doesn't make any sense to yeah, but then like it's just right in front of you. Let me just this to me, there's no reason to feel that dirty over it. Um, so on the second of these terms coming out, we know we want to have it to be green and italic. You know, we have a class name for it. The designer is an idiot. How do we do that? Well, I do an else if the loop index is on two. If it's there on two, well, what you're then going to do, well, you're gonna, just going to add in that exact class as you wanted. Just write it in. And then you're going to have, as you can see, the markup down there, that kind of structure instead. This is me just creating the markup I want. Um, so the, the whole thing will actually print out to this. Um, as you see here, here's the loose first wall. You know, chase them, chase them the length on it. Um, we have our class. You can print it out, and we have the designer as an idiot on this loop index two. If you had the last loop, you know that thing about the, the dot over here we need to add? Well, fine, if you're none of these, well then print it out completely as normal with a comma between, and that's how you're gonna get your markup out. Um, Drupal seven, I have no idea how I would do this, besides of being really frustrated. Um, this took me about 15 minutes the first time I opened up Twig and had to figure out how to do this. Um, that was without looking at documentation or anything else. It was just, hey, how about I just try this out? It's fast and intuitive and really, really nice to work with. And it kind of, for us over here, when we figured that out, how easy it was, it, we, it was pretty much a party that day on IRC, by the way, which is the place to have the unch, unch, unch party. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> did my clicker die? All right, so another new concept that we need to figure out because of course we're gonna have name scheme obscurities. We're gonna have a block, you know, good old Drupal block. Then we're gonna have a, um, a twig block. What is a twig block? Well, well, I'll explain it to you now. So in a twig block is uh, a certain part of a template that you say is gonna be replaceable by other templates. Okay, deep breath, template have a section on it that can be replaced by other templates. Fair enough, what can we use that for? Well, let's say you have the front page. You have your page-front uh, HTML.twig file. 
you have that one. And what you want to do is you want to replace a part of it. Uh, so back in Drupal 7, you would do two different pages. But if you just have a little little thing you want to change on it, if it's the front page, you want to add a big banner that says support us or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, then you would have to do two different templates. Two different templates between means that every, now you have a maintenance problem. Now instead, you can actually exchange that little part. So you do that by defining a block and then through the theme hook suggestion doing that. Um, so again, you go down and you look at your file naming, uh, which is our, our suggestions, and you then go, okay, so in my page here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a header block. So um, I, that's just a name I, I give it. I can give it whatever you want. So on my front page, I'm gonna be, okay, if you're on a page, um, fair enough, if, if you're on the front page, you need to change something out. So, um, no, header block is defined down up here. It's inside of my page. I then, from, from the name I know from my theme hook suggestion, I go in and say page dash dash front HTML, create a new file. So now I have two different page files. One have all of my markup, and another one is only going to contain this little thing I have in my blog. It's then going to ex explain to the system, you know, extend this uh, template file, and it's themes, ukrasil, templates, page, HTML, the trick, fair enough. If you, if you detect that one anywhere, well, exchange my header block, which I have here, up here. Exchange that, and then you know, explain to me I'm in the front page. Uh, and as a live action, um, Oh shit! Did I just there we go. So, live action shot of this is here. I am on a very specific uh, note three on my page, and here I am on my front page. Done and simple. This means that next time you're going to open up a template, uh, uh, you know, a theme, and it's going to have a lot of little little changes. You're not going to have that mess by maintaining your four different pages, or even better. 200 different nodes. You can do this on an, on any template you want to extend on. You want to do this whole block thing. Do a, you define a block inside of that template, and then you extend on it. Um, and that's a quick and easy way to work around that issue of maintaining 6,000 different templates. Another thing we're going to have in now in Drupal 8, and that is whole, the whole uh, translation thing. Translation in Drupal 7 was a little bit of a pain in the ass when you were writing it in. Um, one of the things for it was like the syntax was com was complicated. Um, you know, uh, this was how it looked first when we got trick in, um, and you can see that there's, there's a lot of room to do errors, and it. it's not nice to do what you're going to do in Drupal 8 now and hold on to your horses. Is you're going to do a trans tag, which is a thing we have, um, which by the way I think is really funny because trans is also in Germany a, a music thing. So und 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 trans trans. Und, und. Um, but translation is, or trans, is how you define data on your template that should be translatable. So here, uh, if I'm, you know, I'm having a part of translation that needs to be translated, that's just what you put into a template and be done with it. So the syntax is really much cleaned up. <sighs> so um, that's actually how Twig works and how it is. Um, a uh, thing that we have figured out, how long did I talk? Only for an hour, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you all dying? Yeah, a couple yeah. minutes. Okay, so uh, my, we're going to have a break very, very soon. I'm just going to do the last like pitch on this. Um, we really need more front-end heroes. I am the only one who's still standing since uh, San Francisco, and that took us two years. Um, that's not how you sell, sell it, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, well, okay, let me put it this way. I'm not very clever. Do you trust me with your front end? <laughs> That's the whole thing. We need more people in the issue queues. We need front enders in the issue queue. Why do we need that? Because it is our system. It's not somebody else's system. It's our system. It is my fucking system. It's your system. Um, the thing we have been doing that was the biggest mistake ever for years was not to help out our developers to actually make the best markup possible, the best CSS, finding all the front-end trends. If you went in and saw WebChick's session yesterday about all the new hot things that happened since Grunge was a thing back in 1999, and saw that she said, well, she was actually really scared of getting into front-end. Of course, because she has not seen any of the things that have happened the last 15 years. A whole ton of our developers, of course, they don't understand that because they are doing database stuff and all of that thing I don't want to touch. I just want to help out with doing the thing I'm good at. So we really need you. We really need you to come in and help out, and especially your opinion. 
um, and we will actually listen. I do know that sounds like lies, but it's not. Um, because if you have, this is kind of the whole team of us who has been like contributing within the last, like actively in e weekly meetings and stuff. That's not enough to carry on how every Drupal page is going to work on the front end for the next four years. Seriously, we're powering a couple of percent of the web. We actually need more people. Um, actually, another thing I've been thinking about, and I actually asked Joel about a couple of the days, is well, if we're going to have companies hiring in Drupal people to actually do Drupal 8 to get Drupal 8 out, how come we don't have any companies hiring, that, let's say, one of these two freelancers we have up here today on the stage to actually help out on Drupal 8? Um, or somebody throws money at it and say, hey, we actually have, a, a, we have money to hire somebody in to help out with this. Because getting this whole thing working takes a lot of time. If somebody knows a project manager that really want to help us out, because uh, that's another thing, planning and organizing all this stuff takes forever. Um, actually, during Drupal Dev Days, I flew all the way to Chicago to sit down with Kotzer for four days while we had about 300 developers in seconds. So I live in Europe. I fly all the way to the other end of the world in Chicago. I also am a Packers fan, so it kind of feels a little bit strange to be in that city. Um, to sit and try to plan out all the things our developers were doing on right next to where I live, that does not make any sense. We need a project manager to help us out and crack the whip on us. One of the things why I want to have, I want to have Jen home to the issue queue where she belongs and do a Drupal 8 tweak. Um, we need that and we need, we need somebody to help us out with that. Um, another thing is if you want to keep on like following our Drupal tweak initiatives, the hashtag Drupal tweak is kind of the thing where we yell out new, new exciting things. Um, the, um, if you want to figure out what we're actually doing, we are, we are running a hangout uh, each Thursday the reason it says 1 a.m., that's European time, uh, which is really shit. 4, 4 p.m. <laughs> because 1 a.m. means Thursday morning at 1 a.m. I get out of bed and I sit and talk with these two fine gentlemen. I am dressed. I'm fully dressed at that point. <laughs> I'm just going to warn you. Um, no, it's at... It's at uh, 4, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah. Uh, it's a hangout where we sit down and talk about what we're doing this week and figuring it out and talking and discussing and you no, know, are we doing it the right way or the wrong way? And, and we have a lot of this and we record them as well. So if you want to see the last three years of discussion between us, you can follow them all. Uh, there's some really fun fun ones from Seged, by the way, where you have very drunk developers talking with me and Kot, so that's that was interesting. Um, besides of that, join us on IRC. Uh, we are 24/7 there because. I mean, I'm in Europe and they're in the States and we have people all around. So there's always somebody to help you out if you want to figure it out. Um, we're also using a Slack app to try to keep connection. Uh, ping me on that if there's a thing you're going to be interested in. Um, on Friday, uh, we want to coach. But how many here have developed for Drupal push code in? Good. So many of you who's going to show up to call mentoring then. Because we need that. I mean, and you could put on your resume, I'm a Drupal Core developer. How many here got a patch in ever to Drupal Core? Did that feel good? Yeps. It's a very specific feeling. When I got my first thing in, I was dancing around my living room. It's three in the morning. I was trying to get hold of somebody who would appreciate my enjoyment. <laughs> it's Friday night. I go down to a bar and I figure out there's nobody in the fucking world that can share that I've removed all the IDs out of a page. There was <laughs> nobody there to enjoy my moment. That was very sad for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's on Friday. The, the, the important thing about that is, even if you don't know what to write of code, we can actually help you start out with it. Uh, even if you are like, hey, I don't have time for that, but I do have an opinion on it. Hey, can you show me how this works? If we get the word spread out and figure out, it takes some time before we get into the issue queues, and sometimes you get a little bit tired of it. I just took like three weeks of, I need a break. Um, I'm kind of like getting myself up to getting in there again. If we have more manpower, more people to be in there, we can actually get more done. So code spend on Friday, and it's actually going to be a ton, ton of fun. I promise that. Another thing is in Copenhagen, uh, the end of August, we're going to do the fifth Front End United. It used to be called Drupal Design Camp, but that sounds so unsexy. Front End United still has a more punch in it. Um, um, it's going to be a two-day two camp where we're just going to geek out, only, only, pretty much only front-enders in the room. We see it as front-end development. 
So there is also going to be a ton of JavaScript geeks and all kinds of that. So it's kind of a, and the focus on this is taking also new things coming. So we're maybe not going to have a grunt, gulp, whatever, pushing that in to get our fund in as in Drupal to begin to look at the new world and what's happening. Um, if you don't want to come to my fair, beautiful city, I will not hate you for it. Where did my slide go? God damn it. Um, a month before Front End United in Copenhagen, there's Design for Drupal in Boston, uh, first to third uh, of August. Uh, it has more of a design feel over it. Um, I, have, I do have a plan on attending and hopefully getting a lot of other front enders uh, to attend as well so we can run a couple of sprints and get in the room and punch on it. Um, yeah. So if you didn't hear that, is um, he's the content uh, chair for the conference, so we bribe him to get our sessions in. The good thing is they took half of these sessions, it's going to be design, the other half is going to be fund and development. So that's kind of the thing we do in this room. Uh, and yes, he would like to see them, and we should actually. Um, okay, so to this, any questions? We did, uh, we've been monitoring the Twitters, and we've got, I've got about five questions here that we'll answer after the break, because we want to give you guys a break. So um, we've gone a, uh, just a couple minutes over, so how about uh, if you come back at five after five, that's in, all right, thanks for sticking around or coming back, everyone. I'm just going to start with uh, me and Joel. We'll answer a few of these questions that you guys sent in on Twitter, so thanks for doing that. And then uh, we'll get into some of the live demos and fun stuff. So, yeah, we'll get into it. So, uh, Rodney asked, can I use AngularJS with Twig templates? And if yes, how's, how does the syntax not conflict? Uh, I haven't tried this, but my sh probably the short answer that I would give is that if you're using something like Angular, you're probably more so using the Drupal 8 REST API. And so you're probably bypassing the actual Drupal 8 theme system and just getting the data. So I don't think that there would be a conflict with that, to my knowledge. Um, next question is, what is the L prefix on container? Uh, as far as I know, that stands for layout. It does, yeah. It stands for layout. It comes from Smacks. comes from Smacks. And then uh, Shane Jeffers asked, uh, where's the CSS documentation you mentioned? The quickest way I found to get to it is go to drupal.org and search for CSS architecture. Um, I'll let the DrupalCon Wi-Fi sort itself out there. Um, and then um, Eric asked, isn't loop index equals equals two off by one for the second item? This is talking about Morton's example. His slide probably didn't look exactly like this, but this is the rough idea. If, uh, if loop index equals equals two, uh, so to my knowledge, that's correct. Uh, Eric was saying something about... It's one index, not zero index. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one index, not zero index. So there's if you go to the Twig documentation on loops, it gives you all the variables that are available. So by default, if you do loop.index, it starts with one instead of zero. Um, so that's, that's my answer on that. There's an index zero there is one. There is index zero, yes. Okay, so yeah, searching CSS architecture. Okay, and then uh, if you do div class equals, Sunny asked if you do div class attribute dot class and then attribute, will attribute print all attributes including class which is already present? present? And yes, it will actually. Uh, to do that now, you would have to do attributes and then pipe and say without class. I can actually, it's probably easier if I just show you that. Because uh, we do, uh, we did, uh, Joel and I did a talk yesterday, so I can just show you the slide that has that. So, this is attributes are an object in Drupal 8 theming, so they know how to print themselves out. So, uh, you can do, you can split out the attributes, and then you say attributes without class so that you don't get duplicates. 
And this without filter is something that Drupal added to Twig. And in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how you can add your own filters and functions to Twig. And if you've got your laptop out and you've got Drupal installed, you can play with it and try and add your own stuff too. Um, and by the way, this without filter works for render, render arrays too. So we got, we got rid of show and hide. So yes. And actually, while I've got my slides, I might as well just kind of tell you who I am, because you probably don't know who I am. So my name is Scott Reeves. Uh, I go by Kotzer on the internet. I'm a developer at Digital Kidna. We're a 30-person Drupal shop in London, Canada, and also a silver sponsor of DrupalCon. I love DrupalCon. Uh, Drupal 8 theme system co-maintainer, and Joel is as well. And Joel, I'll let you introduce yourself later. Unless you want to do it now. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll just do that now. Uh, Drupal Core Mentor, that's... The core mentoring program is a way to kind of dip your toes in the water of, of helping develop Drupal, and that's, that's how I got started. Highly recommend it. Um, I'm just kind of passing that along now. And, uh, yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Joel Patet, and I've been doing websites for a while. Um, I do front end and then back end, so I kind of try to, I sit in the middle somewhere and try to make designers talk to developers. Translation is what I do. Um, and then there's, um, I'm also co-maintainer of the theme system, and I like pierogies. This is a giant pierogi from uh, northern Alberta. And I found it, so I giant I hugged it. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And um, actually, before we jump into it, too, uh, it'd be nice to get an idea of, of who you guys are. So uh, just do a very quick poll. It'll take like thirty seconds. So just throw up your hand if you are a site builder. Should be pretty much everyone. Okay, great. Uh, themers, awesome. Developers. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, DevOps, I like to throw in some wild cards. Cool, cool. Anyone who doesn't think that there are any of these? Okay, all right. So, what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you just keep your hand up the whole time. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so, and by the way, if you do have any further questions, uh, you can tweet it with the Drupal Twig hashtag, uh, Drupal Twig, like so, and um, we'll just take turns monitoring them. You can monitor them, and yeah. Anyway, so you can tweet questions there. Uh, you can come up to the mic here, but it's kind of there's only one. It's way over here, so Twitter is easy. All right. So, <clears throat> and also you might have to bear with me. Got a bit of cold. <laughs> so give me one minute. <clears throat> All right, so let me just close some tabs here. So anyway, yeah, actually, just to kind of close this loop, the CSS architecture, this is some of the documentation. And then if you go to the sidebar here, there's more CSS formatting guidelines, file organization, all that good stuff. So that's all the CSS Drupal 8 new stuff. I, I believe so. I mean, it, I think it's pretty comp. Well, that, that's the, the stuff that I was just showing you is, is specifically about CSS. The theme system and, and how to use Twig and Drupal is not fully documented yet. We're still working on that. Um, yeah, so. Okay, so uh, I threw a couple comments on this, the session node for this session. So if you go there, it is, um, let me see. I don't know what node ID is. It is. Looks like it's 2828, uh, but anyway, uh, we've got Super Mega Ultra, Twig Without Drupal, and Axe, and then we have uh, the special guest appearance of Twig Entity Embed. So if you want to follow along, uh, these are all just, actually, sorry, the Twig Without Drupal is, is a special, I don't think it's a module, right? Or is it a module? Okay. Twig, Twig. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a file. It's, just a, it's a, a file, okay. A bunch of files. Bunch of files. So it's 
Okay. No, anyway. Okay. So, if you want to follow along, grab um, Twig without Drupal. I guess just goes in its own thing. Put it in your root. Put it in your root of uh, your web root. Yeah, your web root of your Drupal or any, any, any PHP. Okay, so t yeah, and then Super Meg Ultra, Axe, and Twig Entity Bed Embed are all modules. Those can go in the top level of your. Let me show, actually show this. So you don't. There's not normally dot idea and foo. Ignore those. But um, in the top level of your D8 install, there's a modules folder, and that's where I've got Super Meg Ultra and etc. So I'm just gonna go through how to extend Twig, the, the very, very basics of it. Uh, it's actually very similar. I'm kind of happy that it's very similar to how it's done in Symphony land. So if you're familiar with it uh, in Symphony, I'm not. I've never, <laughs> never used Symphony. But if you're familiar with that, it should look very similar. So, so I've got an info file for my module. And the more important part here is this services file. So this is just declaring basically the classes that are in my module. So I'm declaring, this is kind of giving it a machine name, pointing it to where the class is, giving it the full namespace. And then very importantly, I'm twag twagging it, <laughs> twig tagging. <laughs> it's um, tagging it with twig.extension. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Okay, and then within that class, let me just close my little side panel here. Okay, within here, you you give it a name. Uh, again, that's kind of a machine name. And then all I'm doing inside here is implementing a couple other methods, get functions and get filters. And you saw, if you were here earlier for Morton's talk, actually, how many were here for the first half? Okay, so pretty much everyone. Okay, great. So, yeah, functions. Let me just actually uncomment some of this stuff. Okay, so this first one here. Can, can everyone see that, by the way? Should I blow that up a bit more? Okay, thank you. So on the first line there, I've got hey Austin, and then I have pipe and classify. So that's a filter. Uh, filters are mainly used for doing some kind of manipulation on a variable that you're outputting, and you can pipe multiple ones as well, so it's very cool. So the first example that I did, it's actually at the bottom here, so this is my classify filter. So this is if you have some kind of piece of data. Uh, someone in, in uh, New York camp actually kind of gave us this idea of, and both of these examples are, in our opinion, something that we could just add to Drupal core because they seem generally useful. So classify. What, it, what this is doing is saying, if I use the classify filter in Twig, hook it up to the Drupal HTML class function. So the second part of this, the second argument of this, is just a PHP callable. So it can be any procedural function, or it can be a method on a class. OK, so all I did was I opened up the Bartik. I'm just using the default Bartik theme here. I opened the page.html.twig, and I put in, hey, Austin, and then pipe classify. And by the way, before I forget, for some of the stuff to work smoothly, uh, I would recommend that if you're playing around with this stuff or if you're following along right now to get the settings.local.php set up. So this is a sort of a more recent thing in Drupal 8. Um, I know I use this a lot on Drupal 7 sites, so it's kind of nice to see that it's actually, the convention is, is actually kind of there now. So. In, if you go into the sites folder in your D8 install, you should see this example.settings.local.php. And importantly, it turns off the render cache. This can be really frustrating if the render cache is on because you might update your node template and you don't see anything change. It's because that whole rendered node is cached in the database. And then a little further down, we have our, our pal twig debug, which is amazing and my favorite thing in the world. So all I did was I took this example.settings.local.php, copied it to uh, my site's default folder, and we'll rename it to settings.local.php. I shouldn't say all I did. It's a few steps. 
Then you go to your settings, PHP, at the very bottom. Ignore all this stuff at the bottom. But uh, right here, this should be near the bottom of your settings, PHP, but they'll be commented out. So this is saying if, if there's a settings local PHP, include it. So just uncomment those lines, then it'll be reading this one. And then the only other thing I did was uncomment to a debug. All right. So with that all said, I've got just a normal Drupal 8 install here. Let me just actually make it a little bit smaller so it's less responsive-y looking. Okay, so I've just got a normal, well, yeah, I refreshed it there. So at the top here, we've got hey dash Austin. So it took out, you know, it took out the space, replaced it with a dash, took out the exclamation point because you can't have an exclamation point in a CSS class, right? So pretty simple but cool in my opinion if you need to build some kind of dynamic CSS class, right? And then we can do a similar thing for functions. Oops. So we might want to close these guys. We might want to hook up to Drupal get path to grab some kind of asset from you know, from our theme or from a module or something, let's say. So I hooked up get path. I'm just calling it get path in Twigland, and then mapping it to the Drupal get path uh, function, which takes a type. So it could be core, profile, module, theme, or theme engine, and then it just wants the machine name. So now in my Twig template, now that I've done that, I can do get path, theme, Arctic. And then actually let me throw this, throw some pre-tags around here so it's a little easier to see. And now we get core themes Bartik. So this is, I, I don't know, I think this is really cool because some people when they first see Twig or first hear about it, like especially if you're like a hardcore PHP developer, I, I'm a back-end developer myself in my, in my day job, but uh, PHP template is not a templating language. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's some people see it as sort of, oh, you're taking all my toys away. But this is, to me, this is a, a much better way of doing it. You're not doing database queries in your templates because I don't know if anyone's seen those sites, but I assure you they are real. <laughs> there are sites out there that are basically building out the whole site in the page template, database queries and all. So, yeah, so not not the best. So. So it's this way we can kind of pick and choose and also kind of make sure that we're providing a improved experience for people who actually live in these templates all day, right? So that is that. And let's do move on to this next one. So this is the entity embed. So, um, oops, not that one. So Steve Vector, Steve Persh, he works at Palantir. Uh, I was just talking to him a couple days ago, and he he kind of came up with this idea. It's sort of it's almost one of those hive mind things because uh, Dave Reed is was actually working on something similar, just not with Twig. So um, it looks like those those two will actually come together because there's already uh, an entity embed module for Drupal 8 that's in in that has a dev version. So uh, likely Twig functionality will be added to that, thanks to Steve. So, and I I asked Steve if I could demo this because I thought it was freaking cool. So, what this does is, uh, Steve did a. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick. He created. Um, he basically did what I just showed you. He created a a Twig extension called Twig Entity Embed. And then he's got his own function here, which calls all the Drupal stuff. And by default, it will do a block for the entity type. So in practical terms, you can give it the machine name of a block, Drupal Entity, to entity Embed Bartik Search. And there is my search block that I embedded from the Twig template. And you can see it down here too. Isn't that cool? And you can do that, of course, you can do that for any kind of entity. So if I wanted to embed node one as well, my little test article here, 
I can do that too. And you can specify the view mode and all this stuff. So it's stuff like that makes me really excited because the like the user experience of that is or the themer experience basically of that is pretty great. I mean, you don't have to really know the guts of it. You're just saying, oh, hey, I want to embed this thing, right? You don't have to click anything. <laughs> yeah, so exciting times. So that is that. And I also want to show, how are we on time, by the way? What time is it? It's 5 through 26. 5.26, okay. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure if I've used that one, but. All right, so and then I'm just going to go through some debugging stuff. So if you grab the, uh, should have mentioned this earlier, but if you grab the Devel module, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, if you grab the latest, like Drupal, Drupal 8 dev version of the Devel module, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, it's got a Kint submodule in there, which is actually Confusingly, it's completely independent, doesn't rely on Devel. But anyway, I've uh, gone in and, well, basically, uh, like a couple months ago, I added a little Twig extension to this module so that the Kint would be available from Twig templates so that you could actually have some pretty powerful debugging right from within your Twig template. And that got committed and everything, so you can have that to play around with. So, yes, so let's, let's actually do that. So Kint... Uh, if anyone's familiar with Devel, Krumo, Kint is basically just another version of that, a different version of that. So it's kind of, you know, an on-page debugging thing. To me, it's a, it's a lot more powerful than Krumo. It does some pretty cool stuff. Um, let me actually get that awesome thing back up because I there's a slide in here that's pretty relevant to what we're talking about. So if you if you print out sandwich.cheese this is totally out of context but if you print out sandwich.cheese in a twig template twig does a lot of stuff behind the scenes to try and figure out which cheese you meant so using if you kind of tie that in with the de debugging tools like hint like ladybug like krumo whatever anything that gives you the, the, these sort of tools and if you are aware of some of these conventions, like the get and is, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Like you can grab stuff from within the template pretty easily. So I'm just going to kind of walk through that for a couple minutes here. So in my template, if I throw kint in here, and if I don't give it any arguments, it's just going to give me all of the variables that are available, also known as the twig context. So. It just threw it at the top of my page here, twig context is an array, and these are all my variables that I have available to my template right now. And But it gets pretty cool because you could do stuff like, you could look at the user, for example, if you say you want to do something with the user in this certain template, it'll, it'll show you what's on the actual object, but then you'll also actually get the methods. So a lot of these are those get is conventional things. So you can actually grab these pretty easily using that dot syntax. So I can get I can get the user's email based on it having get email. I can do user dot email and there it is. Cool. So it just just wanted to kind of tie those two things together because I, I think like my, my knowledge of, of the whole object-oriented programming thing is still fairly limited even though I've been working on Drupal 8 for like the past year and a half. So uh, don't feel bad if you're still scared of object-oriented programming. Like I still am a little bit too. So, but just know that once you know some of these little tricks and stuff, it's actually not so bad. So uh, yeah. That's pretty much my spiel. Again, if you have questions, uh, Drupal Twig on Twitter. Okay. All right.
still have to go through a couple more things. Okay. okay. If we can squeeze you in at like near the end of it. Okay. okay. Oh, big demos. That is a large screen. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, smaller? Oh, you have the window? Or? Yeah, where the thing is. Ah. Anyways. Yeah. So, um, I have uh, two repos. You might have already cloned them already. Um, the first one is uh, Twig without Drupal. And that way we're going to look at what Twig can do without Drupal. And so you kind of get an understanding of um, how it works without the whole Drupal doing stuff for you. Um, and then the second one is a little module that hacks the Drupal core twig service. So that will be fun. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do them um, on the fly. So it's going to live demo, and we'll see what happens. Um, but the actual source code for all of this is actually on those things. And so you can cheat and just grab them and kind of follow along that way, or you can try to keep up and write at the same time. I'm going to start with the um, uh, the Twig without Drupal, and I'm going to create it into a folder called Twig on my um, on my Drupal. I'm going to put it in Drupal, but you can put it in anything. You can put anything that loads PHP. I have notes. Helps me. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install it. Uh, if you have Composer, this is the easy way. Um, like I said before, if you can clone it, you can clone that whole thing. I might, uh, I'm just going to uh, do the regular way. So, Composer, require, and then in quotes, I type in twig, twig, colon, one, dot, star. That's going to basically launch Composer, and it's going to install uh, the twig um, right into my, actually it's going to put it right into my root. I'm going to move the things that it creates um, once it's done there. The Wi-Fi might be slow on this one, so I might cheat a little bit here. Usually it doesn't take too long. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cheat. So I already have it completed here, so I'm just going to rename this thing. Change. I put it in a folder called Twig just to keep things simple. And what it creates, it, when you do that composer, it's going to create this composer JSON, this composer lock, and a vendor file. None of these other things get created through that. Um, so I'm going to create an index.php. The index.php is going to load a bunch of, let's get rid of this thing. Uh, I'm going to type in some stuff. I'm just going to pretend like that's not there. Return. <laughs> So, uh, we use uh, Composer, and Composer comes with an autoloader, and that means we don't have to do any includes. Um, so in this case, we're going to just uh, require the vendor autoloader. So the folder was called vendor, and inside there's an autoloader. So we, we can launch that, um, and that will make sure that all the PHP classes that come with Twig are loaded. And then uh, we create a file system loader from Twig that uh, there's a couple different ones. The two ones that, oh. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that technical. 
I'll, I'll try to not shake the podium or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I can kind of hear it too. You just back off a little, maybe, or mm. well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can still hear me okay? Yeah, that works better. Okay. Um, so uh, there's two types of file loaders uh, for Twig, and uh, this one is actually uh, going to be loading the templates. And inside of here, all you do is you pass it where you want to store your templates. So I'm going to store my templates into a templates folder. Um, and there's a bunch of function. There's a bunch of properties you can pass to the Twig environment, and I've kind of annotated the crap out of them, um, but there's, I just created an array so I could pass them in easily and annotate them, and then there's a cache, and you can tell it where the cache folder is, you could also tell it, I don't want to put a cache folder in there, and that's going to save the twig, false, um, that's going to save the, the, the compiled twig uh, templates as PHP files inside of that folder. Um, and uh, Drupal actually does that too, and it puts it inside of sites, default files, PHP twig. Um, so that's where it's storing it. We're just storing it in nowhere or inside of a folder called cache. It'll create the actual folder for you, so you don't have to worry about that, uh, as long as you have the right permissions on your Apache server. Um, there's auto, auto escape, and I have it turned on to true at the moment. In Drupal, it's not on. <laughs> We're working on it hard, and uh, Chicks has actually got it down to like about, I think he's got it about 400 fails out of a thousand since the beginning of the week, so that's pretty good. Is there a specific reason that it's off until like final date? Because it seems to make some sense like that it's not. We gotta make get rid of the consequences of having it on. There's fails and and it breaks head. It breaks head. Yeah. <laughs> until we get those fails off then you yeah, know. But we might put it in broken as long as the fit pass the, the right. test pass, so yeah. Um then there's uh, strict variables. That just makes sure that uh, you can pass in something that doesn't exist, or you can actually try to print something that doesn't exist. We have this turned on in, um, or sorry, turned off in, in Drupal, so that <coughs> if you print, try to print a variable that doesn't exist, it doesn't blow up at you uh, and say, that doesn't exist. So uh, we kept that off uh, in Drupal core. And then there's one for debug, and that allows us to put debug messages like dump and stuff like that. Um, and auto reload. Um, Kind of ties into the the uh, the debug. If the debug is turned on, then it automatically goes on anyways. Um, but you can also turn it off, and that just checks to see if the twig file changed, and if so, recompile it. The next part we got in there is the twig environment. Um, so I'm just passing in that loader I created at the start, um, and then the twig options you, that you passed in, and I get an object called I called it twig. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and I've added uh, the debug extension to this. You don't actually have to have that, but that provides us with the dump function, um, and that's on also comes inside of Drupal. Then I made a giant array because we're good at making arrays in Drupal land, <laughs> and I just cr tried to create a bunch of links. Um, those that that structure that I created um, is a nested structure because I wanted to kind of demonstrate uh, a little trick. And um, I'm going to call on the, the Twig uh, object I'm going to call render, and I'm going to pass it in a, a file called uh, page.twig in my templates folder. And then I'm going to pass all those links to that variable. And it says echo, so I'm going to print it to this index page. So let's just have a quick look at the template <coughs> file. Inside this templates file, I have, um, I'm have i importing um, another twig file. So you can actually import other twig files in there. I'm going to take that off for a second. And it, uh, and the hashes are comments, so that's not going to do anything. I neutered it. And I can do the same for this one. So I, all I'm doing is calling dump. Um, I could actually just also just print a straight up string in there if I wanted to, or I can actually do the same thing there. So it's like, howdy. 
and then whatever you want in your regular HTML. I'm just going to see if this is actually working now. So let's go to V8, in my case, twig folder. And howdy test is there, and you have the dump from uh, what uh, kind of the simplified dump thing that Scott showed you the awesome kint file for. This is the what comes out of Twig. So you can actually use this one without installing Devel, um, and it kind of shows you what you're getting. So these are this is my crazy array that I've passed in. So those are the variables I have access to. So what I did here is I just kind of I, I created that structure on purpose because my um, my menu twig is going to get back to here. My menu twig has a nice little macro in it. It's kind of like a function, but I can call it recursively. Um, let's get that into view. So this little macro, I give it a name, uh, menu links, and it takes in links, and then it loops through all those items, and then it's basically what your menu, from what I think, what your um, menu links theme function should actually do. So what this does is just kind of checks to see if there's any links, prints the URL, um, does a for loop, uh, prints the actual link in and the name of the link, and then it checks to see if it has a nested links uh, class, and then it also uh, calls itself, the macro itself, and passes in its children, and then it's recursive. Um, and recursive things don't happen too often in theming and programming, but menu links seems to be the place to put them in my opinion. And there you got uh, escaped. You can see the V tag is escaped. And um, you can also see that my links are nested. And that, those variables, I can actually turn off auto escape here. False. And, oh, sorry, that's a bad example. It doesn't double escape, which is kind of nice. Um, just going to double check. I'm going to ignore that for a second because I am probably lost myself. Also, uh, just for to see what's inside here, there's a cache folder. That's where it's saving things. Um, they actually save out these hashed things, but inside of them is just a PHP file, and it's the generation of the what comes out of Twig. So these are actual PHP files. When you're actually rendering uh, Twig, it actually compiles to PHP, and then it's using these files. If you do not, if you do not, um, if you do not have the caching turned on, it's actually going to be storing them in memory, um, and uh, it's going to be generating the same classes, but it's going to have them in memory, um, and it's going to also reload them or regenerate them when uh, you change them if you have that auto loader turned on. So that's kind of that's kind of the short and quick of how to use Twig. Yeah, sites default files you HP, uh, in your settings or in your set in your default settings.php file. Um, there's a there's a documentation for that one. It's moved into examples, so site. Uh, Sites default examples settings local PHP. If I can remember it right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's an example and a big giant doc block of how to turn off and on the debugging and to turn off. I don't know if you can turn off caching. Sorry? Yeah, you can turn off caching in there too. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. How many am I doing for time too? Uh, it's quarter to six. Okay. I'll try to go quick through the other one. I'm going to cheat again, but you can see here these, when the composer runs, it actually just in, um, uh, installs the latest version of Twig and it puts it in a vendors folder. And just so because I put it in, the, I started in the wrong folder. I think I have a vendors folder in here too. And maybe it went in the right one. Eh, doesn't matter. Let's go to the other one. So modules, they go into a modules folder. Um, I put that axe one inside of this um, inside of this complete. I'm going to rename that again, so that's X. And this one I kind of just want to show how to simplify this thing. So I have a module info, 
it just says that um, I'm hacking away at Twig and it's the forestry, forestry package. So with just this YAML file, you will be able to, as long as your cache is refreshed, go into your Drupal, to, uh, Drupal 8, log in, my secure password, go to extend, find some forestry, or not forestry, hacks. There's my axe modules in my forestry package. I can enable it, and that's that's probably the, the minimal stuff that you have to do to get the module up and running. Configuration saved. Let's go back here. Modules, hacks. So I also created a routing YAML. Inside of here, um, I've set up a path. So the path is called chop. And I've created a class with the namespace. And the title is cutting down trees one twig at a time. And I gave it some permissions. This is just like boilerplate stuff that I copied off of some other module. Not a Sorry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I put a source folder in here, a controller. A uh, controller just allows me to print out the simplest possible thing. Inside of here, I have uh, an axe controller, and I'm going to close this thing. Do, do, do. So my axe controller is just extending controller base, and I have a function or a, met a, a method that's actually being called by that routing. So this should be getting called. So I just wanted to check to see, okay, did I do everything right here? So the I usually do a sanity check because I don't know if I'm doing things right, and so I do the minimalist thing that I possibly can, and then I check to see if I actually did it. So I'm going to return howdy Austin and see what I get. So I'm going to go to chop, and my screen is super small, but it says howdy Austin there. And of course I can change it to make sure, yes, I am indeed changing this thing, and there it is. Um, just so you know, if you don't see the changes, it might not be your fault. You might just need to clear your cache. Um, that's normal Drupal things. You might already know that, of course. But yeah, it, and then Drupal 8, it's Drush. If you're using Drush, it's Drush CR instead of CCL. Um, it means cache rebuild. Um, I don't know why they make the change, but yeah, that's what you do. So next sanity check I want to see is, does a renderable array even work? with this thing. Can I return a renderable array? So I'm going to turn that one off, turn this one on, go over here. Yes, beaver, pine beetles, and lumberjacks, all things that are against twigs. And yeah, that's just theme item list, and I'm passing the items to it, and it prints them out in a nice little order list, and that's the dirty, dirtiest example that I could do to do <laughs> the cleanest and dirtiest at the same time. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with this thing. Um, I, I was playing around and I was trying to figure out what's the the craziest thing I could do to like do something really quick but also not burden me with creating another file. And when you're in Twig, you're also creating like these template files all the time. So you're going to be uh, jumping back and forth between your Twig file and your controller and it's like a, a separation layer there. And I wanted to do inline templating um, just so that I could do something quick to see if it actually works then I could actually move that stuff into a template later. Um, Drupal does not do this, uh, uh, but Twig does. So what I tried to do is I tried to get at the Twig, the Twig service, because it is a service. And ignore that for a second. Again, actually, I'm using, I'm building an array with uh, users just for example purposes, just an array that I'm going to pass to this template. Um, so. Let's look at this render inline function that I've added. Um, I passed in a, a template, a template uh, string and a data array. And then I grabbed Twig service right from Drupal. Now I actually have that Twig object that I was using in the previous example. And I can do things to it. I can change the loader. Before we were actually using a template loader. Here we're using a string loader. That string loader uh, allows me to do inline templating. Um, so there's the loader again. There's um, I'm going to get the existing loader off of the existing twig because what happens if you don't have that on there? Um, it tries to render every, after this point it executes, everything else in Drupal tries to render with a string is like, oh, I can't do that. So it just works. So that's, I'm just hacking away at this thing to get it to work. We might even be able to include this in, in Drupal if you wanted to hack away at it. But for now, it's just this 
function I have. So here's, um, I'm setting that new loader onto this thing and then I'm going to pass the template, uh, the string template to this render, uh, twig render function and all the variables that I want the, the template to use. And then I grab the output from that and then I set the old loader back on just so I don't have everything break. And then I output that. So I'm gonna call that, there's the render in line, there's my string of hello name and the um, user's loop, and I'm escaping the username there, and then I'm doing n n4, and then I'm actually passing name and user's variables to them, and uh, render array, I shouldn't comment that. So I have a render array up here, and I have the users, and those variables are getting passed to the template, and they're getting used in the template. So, if I didn't do this right, let's see what happens. Yeah, there you go. First one has a, a link that says, hello, y'all, and has a link actual in there. This one actually had a tag on there, but it was escaped, so Taggy McTaggerson is escaped. And Jay Pritchett and Gloria are listed below. So that way I can actually, it's like, okay, I want to make a quick template. I'm, I'm trying something out. This is not something you'd actually do in real world code. It's just something that you're trying to get something up and, and done as quick as possible, you need the tools to do that, this is what you do. You do these sanity checks to make sure you're actually doing something that's actually outputting. Because it's really frustrating when you like turn on a page, you made a bunch of work, and all of a sudden you don't see any changes, and you're like, what the hell just happened? So <laughs> this is a way to like kind of sanity check what you're doing. And also, it's fun because I can hack away at the Twig service and do whatever I want to it. Um, and uh, yeah, for fun or profit or just whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my talk. How are we doing? Good time. We, we have seven minutes left. Yes. So <laughs> I don't know. If Forrest, can your demo fit in seven minutes? Maybe. Okay. Cool. Yes. Cool. Actually, it's right on here. So oh, perfect. It's still there. Let's see if we can do this. So if you if you came here um, wanting to find out about upgrading your Drupal 7 themes, then uh, Forrest is going to show off a really cool tool that will help ease that transition. Okay, we mirrored there? Are we mirrored? No? We're not mirrored? And if anyone has questions about uh, what Joel was just talking about, uh, again, you can use hashtag Drupal Twig on Twitter or come bug us after this as well. Yay. Kill that. Um, you can see that there's a, a Twigify module. It doesn't, I don't have a release yet because there's still some, some bugs I'm still chasing chasing all the releases in head. But Twigify is a module to automatically convert your Drupal 7 themes to Drupal 8 using a Drush command. So it's pretty self-explanatory. There's some ins ins instructions right on the page. You need, you need Drush. So, um, and so I have, a, I, have a, I have a Drupal 7 site here with all kinds of horrible errors. Luckily, they're all gone. Um, and there's even the color module is being used. That's horrible. Um, <laughs> and then I'm right here, I'm also on my local host, I have a Drupal 8 site. and we go to my Drupal 8 themes. We see that I just have um, uh, Bartik and uh, 7, and then there's also Radix 8. We can ignore that for now. And then on my Drupal 7 site, I have um, Bartik and Busy and Radix and some other ones. So the way this, the module works is um, you install it as a Drupal 7 module, and on your Drupal 7 site, it's going to look for any themes you have installed under Drupal 7 and it's going to automatically convert them as best as it can over to Drupal 8. And then there'll be, depending on how much customization is in your, your theme, uh, there will be places where it can't convert the code, it can't run the conversions. Um, in seven minutes, we really don't have time to explain like, the whole process of how it works. Um, but it will then wrap those sections in a twig comment for you later to then go in and hand code, um, hand, hand adjust. So to run it, you simply install the module. So I'm going to, I think it's downloaded, so I'm just going to drush enable Twigify. Can everyone read this or do I need to make it bigger? I can make it bigger. Is, is there anyone that can't read this? Awesome. Great. So Twigify is enabled successfully. So it's really, it's, this is simple. Um, so now we just run it as a command here, drush 
Twigify. And it's going to tell you, you know, you know, what it needs, you know, the name of your theme and the source path and the Unix root path to the to the new one. So we continue. And so now it, it, it iterates over. It's just currently looking at the themes that you have installed, um, but the same engine can be applied to look for templates and uh, theming functions inside of any module, too. So you can, you know, future versions we can point it there. Um, and just in the interest of making sure that I, you know, I don't forget to mention this later. So it's up at Twigify, and it has an issue queue. And so what I really strongly encourage everyone to do is try it, use it, and when you see any issues, report them. Like, for example, you know, there's outstanding issues for, uh, you know, if your theme has Drupal add JS in it, there's no conversion. That should be pretty straightforward to convert that over to attach, but that's an issue. But we can't, we can't, it's a, you know, it's a community supported project. I should mention that it was originally funded by Elephant Ventures, so we want to, definitely want to thank them for originally funding it. And, but it's community supported now. And the, uh, the only way that, it, you know, it moves forward is if you report the bugs and then people, you know, decide they want to fix it. And it's going it's to turn out to be much easier for people to just adjust the Twigify code than for everybody to be, like, converting their, all their themes manually. So, um, in this case, um, we'll go ahead and we'll convert Bartik, because I, I like doing that because then I can kind of compare it to where the, the version of Bartik 8 is. Um, and see how Twigify compares to it. So we enter a new name for the theme, so we'll just call it, um, actually I'll use undercase here, Bartik Austin. And, and then so um, it's going to give us some information. Uh, the, it iterates over it and it finds you know, where everything is. And so everyone, so we have to, uh, we see that the current working directory here is right here. So we're in a Drupal 7 install. Uh, Drupal D 7.23 is the version I happen to be using. And so now if I copy into this directory that's right next to it, which is my Drupal 8 installation, and then I put this in sites, all themes, right? That's where it goes. No one's going to, no one's going to correct me in that? Oh, thank you. Okay, right. See? <laughs> oh, it's... I'm glad we finally fixed that, right? So, so then we just tell it that we wanted to to write the new theme to the Drupal 8 directory in 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 the themes. So, um, we create first thing. It's going to create the uh, info file and remove the old one, um, which is actually, of course, a YAML file. And I'm right now. I'm just basically wearing out the Y key, right? I'm just like pressing pressing Y. Um, and um, I'm going to skip over menu tree because um, that's change. So it gives the option of skipping that one. Exited with no errors. Hmm. Did that? I feel like, you know what? Let's see if that actually did it. Because I, I don't. Don't trust the parents. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Ella's themes. Everything's okay. Bartik Austin. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to, we're, we're probably running quickly out of time. Um, but I want to actually do this again. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove RF minus, um, where am I at? Sorry. I'm just going to remove the one that it just did and just run it again. There we go. Um, so we're going to run Bartik again and call it Bartik Austin. And there we go. And yeah, go Drupal 8 themes. And so this time, actually, I'm going to process. Oh, there we go. So, okay, so sorry. So menu tree is the one. So if you, I, I, I just missed it. I'm going to process all of them, but I'm going to skip menu tree is what I'm going to do. There we go. And I'll skip that one too. There we go. But I will create the theme file and then remove the old one. So I, if, if anyone has any kind of questions, you know, just ask me afterwards. I'm just kind of racing through it instead of actually explaining each step. So it, just like that, I mean, I actually just did it twice, like, you know, in a, in a minute. Um, it's, it's created a new one. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to um, drush cache rebuild on 8. Otherwise, it's not going to, it's not going to pick it up. So now if I go back to my install, when that comes, when that comes back, it, you're going to find what it's done. It's taken the Drupal 7 theme, which whatever Drupal 7 theme you picked on your Drupal 7 site, and converted it automatically to a Drupal 8 theme and installed it into your, your Drupal 8 installation. And so now if I go back here and I refresh, and after, after a cache rebuild, I see that I have on here, um, oops, wrong one, sorry. There we go, it's on 7. 
I see that I have a new theme here called Bartik Austin, uh, a dev. Now I happen to know um, that there's a couple, couple tricks in here. Um, for example, I know that if we look in, um, I'm going to CD over into themes, into Bartik Austin, and I'm going to kill that thing there because I happen to know that there's an instance of a Drupal add JS in color, and I really don't even like color much. <laughs> but anyway, it's a great idea. And it's a great, great idea. Um, and then I'm going to actually open my Arctic Austin theme, <coughs> and I'm going to jump down here, and I see, you see, there's also who here knows that Drupal add, add JS and add CSS are deprecated in Drupal seven. That's really good because a lot of times when you know, when, I, when we, no, they're removed in eight. Yeah. Who knows they're deprecated in seven? See, that's what I'm used to. I'm used to people because we really, we really were not good about getting that message out that you're supposed, you're not supposed to be using them in seven to begin with. Like it's, it's a lot of projects have a very official deprecation removal alternating, right? So in one version things are deprecated, in the next version they're removed. So these functions are actually deprecated in seven. We were just, we really didn't didn't get that word out to people so they really understood this. And now they're removed in eight. So it's, it's gone, they will throw errors, right? So I'm going to just remove them here. Um, there we go. And then I think I have another one here. And then look at this one here, that one. If anyone has been working with, uh, with Twig for a while, you'll see that, that is, that's going to be a problem too, right? So, and these are, and there's issues um, for, for, for these in the Twigify queue. It's just these are things that kind of get the time to adjust, adjust the, the parser in the engine so it, so it writes it correctly. So now, just kind of manually, a few, two, two, just two manual tweaks. We're going to um, go ahead and we're going to enable the theme that Twigify just converted. And it has enabled. So let's go ahead and set it as our default theme. And now in theory, we're gonna, so now I have a Drupal 8 site here that we're going to reload with the version of Bartik that was just automatically generated using a single Drush command script and wearing out your Y key and see um, how it looks. It's, and it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it works and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It's, um, it's, it's, it's like that. I have, um, I mean, I can cheat and I have, a, you know, I have a version here that I've copied previously and there's a couple, there's just a couple little things in here. So let's see if we can find, if there's just one thing in here, we may be able to uh, find it. And um, so we'll go to our error log and see. Okay. So on, I just missed. I just missed that, didn't I? You, you, I think you commented out that exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I didn't. Oh, oh, you know what I needed to do, right? Yeah. Um, that's that was. That's not what I needed to do. I just needed to do that and do that, and I think. This is the one. There we go. That's the one because there is no variable get in Drupal 8. So let's see if that is going to be just like that. So, um, and there's issues in the Twigify cube for both uh, converting a Drupal add.js add and add CSS to the attach functions and to be able to handle any instances of variable get and convert those over to CMI. So um, everyone give it a try. Uh, as soon as you find any bugs, um, drop, drop that in the issue queue. And if you're interested in helping out the Twig project, it will be a lot easier than everybody hand coding all their themes. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for sticking around.